Folks, hi. My first video. I'm on the internet. You can see me. I can't see you. I'm bringing some of Schiffman's jokes. Maybe I look a little bit like Schiffman. Uh, some people told me that I should uh, really get in touch with him and making some jokes about that. But that's something I'm going to do in the future. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my um, project that I've been pushing the last three months. Months, You know, my English, sometimes I have to think about the, the, the words I use. <laughs> and um, the project I just started a month ago is called Programming Posters. Maybe some of you just followed me on Instagram and see, saw that stuff. I basically just, you know, made posters every day, poster designs, and basically this was a preparation for the course that I gave at the Rhine Val University. So um, yeah, as you can see, lots of posters here, and of course all these posters are animated. So this is kind of how um, well a programmed poster looks like. Of course, that's not a poster, right? That's kind of a metaphoric. Um, extension um, of the printed poster anyway because I think you know now and in the future we are confronted with lots of moving images a poster is not anymore um, a surface with with images and text on it basically a poster is more like a, mm, how to say that it's more like a like a like a like an application like like a hardware that shows information maybe based on your data based on your movements on your actions um, it's more a software than a, than a pr printed medium okay anyway i'm not going to talk about too much philosophy today uh, what i want to do is just show you my um, approach and i had just started the project and how i just um well structured the the, the project in a technical way and um, what I did here is kind of a boilerplate, right? This is the boilerplate for my programming posters project. Basically, when I run a sketch in processing, yeah, as you can see, this is a processing sketch, right? So what you see here is just the boilerplate, right? Here we've got a little bit of text, programming posters, so research on generative design by Tim Rodenberger and so on. Here's the date of today. And um, everything you can see here is basically, instead of the moving rectangle, is basically put into this file, framework.pde, right? So this is the foundation for every single poster. I was working a lot on this framework and I'm always, um, well, dropping some th stuff out of it and putting new stuff in. And basically now I think this is kind of the perfect boilerplate for this project. How I just, you know, you of course can write me something in the comments and tell me how I can make it better. <laughs> but um, basically, this is a pretty good, pretty good starting point for developing some posters, poster designs, and processing. So um, let's go through the code. What I do basically here is I just import three libraries. First, the OSCP5 library, which I used to control the sketches with my iPad. So there's an application that's called Touch OSC, and you simply can move sliders on your iPad and the values in a sketch uh, change. It's pretty much like a digital MIDI controller, something that you can use to just control your sketches. Um, then I use the awesome library uh, Video Export by um, AB Paces. I'm not really sure if that's <laughs> the right spelling, the right way to spell his name, but um, well, bear with me, Abe. Um, yeah, and I used the the Ani library by Benedict Gross. Basically, I didn't use it at all, by, but I <laughs> at the, all the time just wanted to use it, so I just put it into here also as an import. The whole sketch is not directly built in uh, the well the the. the the, the processing, the the, um, <laughs> the P graphics that is that you are in when you just start writing a sketch. I use a known P graphics element, right? Because I just wanted to. Sometimes I just wanted to 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 move the sketch to the middle of the of the sketch. Um, well, move the poster in the middle of the sketch. So can and so I was able to make a rectangle which is black, and I was able to put the poster in the middle of this uh, of the screen to have an optimized export for Instagram. These are the variables that I can control with the TouchOSC application. I've got four toggles and eight faders. 
mostly I just used well six or something, but yeah. This is the these are the definitions for the for for colors and and um, and the size of the posters. This is not used anymore, I think. Let me see if the sketch works. Oh yeah, it works. Okay, I don't need a gap. Um, I used two colors. Well, why did I use only two colors? Right, this is a good question because basically it doesn't make so much sense to you, some of you maybe. Um, and uh, well, this is a limitation, a pretty hard limitation, but that's exactly what makes the posters remarkable, right? That's my opinion. Um, you can see that all these posters have this, bla uh, this blue and white coloring. So that is the way how I make the sketches basically remarkable, right? That's why people can say, oh, this could be a sketch by Tim Rodenbrücker in the end when they see something on Instagram. So it, that's one of the effects. That's not why I did it. I just did it because, you know, I studied graphic design and I've got a deep love and deep background in graphic design. And I I really like the idea of minimalism and reduct, reductive uh, thinking. And, um, well, basically that's something that just shaped the way I work in every kind of design I make. Like, you know, I make websites and coding, but I always try to reduce everything to the, to the, to the essential components. In this case, you know, all of these things were possible to express with only two colors. Sometimes I had to think about how to get rid of problems that come by using only two colors. Like this one here, you can see that I just put some, um, yeah. I, use a, I wrote a custom grid to be able to <laughs> use uh, only just these two colors. And basically that's something that puts the visual output of the sketches a little bit into the neighborhood of seventy, uh, of of the seventies, right? Of the of the time when people were not able to print in many colors and black and white aesthetics, but it was also on vogue to use only a few colors, and it's still, you know, it's it's deeply rooted in the Bauhaus culture, and it's deeply rooted in the design culture, especially in Germany. And uh, I'm from Germany, by the way. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's one of the reasons one of the many reasons I use only black and white. So the ground, I wanted to separate the posters always from, uh, from the ground, so I used black here. And these are the dimensions of the poster. All right, so as you can see, here is a mouse cursor object called cursor. And um, basically, some of the sketches were controlled with a mouse, and the mouse is a very good um, opportunity. Well, it's, a, it's, it's possible to show what the mouse movement does. In this sketch, nothing, nothing happens, but um, that is a way to show directly, look, I move the mouse and um, something on the poster uh, is changing or happening. And that's not possible to show that kind of interaction with um, TouchOSC and the iPad and the MIDI controller. So this is a very nice way to show very clearly how, a, yeah, what, what, a, what a mouse movement does in a sketch. Okay, the export frame rate is 30, and um, I am able to switch the, the cursor uh, from true to false. Sometimes I don't want to show the cursor, and here I can log the OSC events. That means if I want to, sh to want to um, uh, well log the changes in the in the in the faders on Touch OSC, um, it is logged to the console here. All right, image mode is center. That's um, something I always use centered uh, positioning. Here, this is the PG. This is the place where the, where the sketch is um, drawn on, the PG, P graphics element. Um, and here, this is some, some centering. This is not, let me see. Setup so video export should always be on, so the frame rate is not possible, not, not necessary anymore. So here I just um, deactivate the cursor. I mostly don't use strokes here. And here's the new mouse cursor. I've got a class here, this one. And here I can, um, well, set a few, few parameters to, um, well, color the mouse and, and, you know, scale the mouse and stuff. So that's what I do here. This is the constructor method to create this mouse cursor. 
Here I set up the video export. Let me show you that quickly. Here's the branding. Where's the video export? Here it is. So, um, well, this library uh, video export by AB Pesos is awesome. I really recommend you to use it. I know that there are few people out there that don't use it yet. And um, it really simplifies so many things. You don't have to export single images and put them together again in a, a video cutting software or this video maker tool. I think it's called video maker. Yeah, here it is. Um, that's really, really handy. And um, yeah, so here's the video export. This is a method I use to, well, just export a frame sometimes because, you know, sometimes I just wanted to have something like uh, um, only, yeah, I always wanted to only record it when, when the, the Boolean recording is true. So, because sometimes I don't want to record something, that's why I can toggle the, hue, um, the Boolean, I think, with space. Here we go, here it is. So this, ah, I don't can toggle it, but I can activate it. So when I hit space, it starts to record. Yeah, and the utility, sometimes I need a random Boolean. That's one of the utilities. Um, I expected that I will write more utilities in the sketch, but I don't know. I just didn't need more utility, utility functions. So CX, CY, this is something not needed. Let me see if it still works. It looks like it works. Yeah, perfect. So I just, you know, this is the sketch itself. Um, let me clean this up a little bit. Um, yeah, so what do I do here? So what I do here in setup is calling this uh, setup sketch method. And the setup sketch method is in my framework.pde and it just does this stuff here, right? Ah, look, I just initialize, oh, it just run the method to set up the video export twice. That's not really necessary, so one is enough. Uh, well, there's a speciality in working with, I, I'm not really sure why I did that, but there was a problem and I needed to put the size into a settings method. I think it has to do with something like using width and height of the sketch uh, as variables or defining it as variables. I'm not really sure, but I just, you can write a settings method and it also, it works like, this, like the setup method, right? All right, let's go to draw. Basically, what you see here, I put, I draw everything on a p-graphics element. That's because uh, I already said it, but you know, I just used, um, I just wanted to have the possibility to work with a ground. Let me show you that. Let me show you that quickly. So now this sketch has no ground, but if I just say I want it like 900 times 900, it should work. I'm not sure if it works. Yeah, it works. As you can see, this is the perfect format for posting it on Instagram, right? So that's why I um, basically work with a P graphics, but because otherwise I have to know the gap, you know, or calculate the gap between the poster and the, and the borders of the sketch, and that's really uh, that's so much so so difficult to to work with so I just came up with the idea of um, working with P graphics to push matrix methods not necessary let me fix that quickly yeah so branding the branding is basically what you see here on top of the of the poster right here this is the branding program posters a research on generative design by Tim Rodenbrücker here is the date and um, yeah, yeah, this, um, well, this in the end was the, the good way, the right way to work because, you know, I just wanted to have everything that draws the poster itself to be um, separated and be very clearly, uh, how to say that? <laughs> I'm getting lost here in translation. I know what I want to say, but you know, well, basically I want to say that I just put the draw st drawing stuff here between poster start and poster end because I didn't have to search anymore, right? So that's why I've got these two commands here and this is the place where I just draw the stuff on the poster. Here I end the drawing and um, yeah, the show cursor is true. I also can, um, yeah, you can imagine what happens when I set this to false. Big drum, drum roll. Ta-da! No cursor visible. So sometimes I don't need the cursor and it is 
not needed. And yeah, so and then I draw the background. That's a little bit misleading because here I'm drawing the background not of the P graphics element, I'm drawing the background of the sketch. I'm making it black, right? And um, let me see which color I just chose for drawing it black. Ah, okay, I just updated my posters and now I use pure black instead of just this light black. Okay, so here I'm drawing the background and then I translate the P graphics element into the middle of the sketch and I draw it with an image function. Well, cursor run, the cursor is well, like, <laughs> it's a cursor that's seen on, that you can see on the on the poster and save video frame. Basically, that's how I just um, ended up in after I think 40 posters that I did that I created um, or more. I think there was a few more posters, but I really started three times from from zero because first I was putting everything into one application. I wanted to have one application for multiple posters. That was a shitty idea because in the end the whole performance really lacked so much that it was extremely hard to work with it. I'm not really sure if this is a performant way of working. I've got a feeling that since I used the P graphics to, um, yeah, on my sketch here, I've got a feeling that since then the performance is a little bit slow. Um, maybe you have some ideas if that could be true. If yes, please drop it into the comments. If not, let's also find. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to um, make more of these videos because I really enjoy it. And I hope you also enjoyed this video and see you soon in the next one, anytime, at any place. Bye bye.